We're here at Trek, which is the Tropical Research and Education Center here in Homestead, Florida. And what they do here is a lot of research on tropical fruit, on vegetables, and on ornamental plants. Uh, they have all sorts of interesting experiments going on. It's really important stuff that they do. So, this avocado plant was planted in 1986. And uh, these trees, they've been very productive, beautiful trees. And right now in Florida, there's a disease called laurel wilt. It's a fungus, fungal disease, transmitted by ambrosia beetles, uh, a number of species. And they attack the avocado tree, and what happens is the disease does several things. One is it lives inside the water conducting tissue, and that clogs up the water conducting tissue a little bit. But more importantly, it triggers a defense response from the tree. And what trees do when they try to defend themselves by somebody invading them is they try to wall it off. And the way these trees do it is they produce what's called tyloses, which is actually part of the cell walls. They detach it and they try to plug up the tree. And that helps to block it off. And the other thing they do is it induces gum formation. So gums. The problem is the trees are overreacting. And so they, once they trigger that, once they trigger that, it doesn't stop. Other problem is that the fungus moves through the tree super quickly. So it'll get inoculated here, and then the tree's starting to wall it off, and then it moves here. The tree starts walling it off, and it moves here. So once that happens a bunch of times, then the tree is going down. The other problem is in mature avocado groves, the root systems are connected to each other. So what we're looking at here, this is actually about um, 1.25 acres of avocado on two and a half acres. But anyway, what you're seeing here is basically one organism. Yeah, I mean, the, a lot of people think that the root system ends with the edge of the canopy, <laughs> but it goes out like six times exactly. then. Yeah. Exactly, that mangoes are similar. So, so what happens is the disease will get inside this tree, and let's say this tree still has its canopy. The disease gets in this tree, stops transpiring, taking up water. This tree, because it's connected, can take water from this tree and pulls the disease to itself. And so that's why you see that little row where we're missing like four or five trees right, over there. Yeah. That's because it got in one tree and then it went bump, 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 and just moved right down the row. So if you do not try to control this, and I'll talk a little bit about that, um, in six months you can lose about an acre of trees. So. That's what's missing here. So the idea for control, several ideas. One is early detection and scouting. So you need to be scouting your groves constantly. If you detect a tree that has green wilting, um, you need to immediately remove that tree. And that means roots, pull it out by the roots, knock it over, chip it up like this, and destroy it. This way, hopefully, since you caught it early, it will not have moved to its neighbor. If you wait until it's brown, it will have already moved to its neighbor. You just don't know it yet. You will in about three to six weeks, but you don't know it right away. So what happened in this grove is we had some individual, and this, this starting of the disease is with a beetle. So a beetle came, bored into this tree, and they bore into the trees and made galleries, lay eggs in the galleries to propagate. Um, they inoculate the gallery with the fungus, and then they eat the fungus as it grows. They're not actually eating the wood. Mm -hmm. They're using the wood as a substrate to grow the fungus that they live on. And so that's what happened. And so uh, the tree went, started to wilt, turn green, wilting, green wilting. We removed the tree, and, and so far we have seen no signs that it moved. So some of the other strategies include um, the use of prophylactic fungicides. So you can go in and before the tree gets the disease, apply a fungicide. Uh, mostly people are injecting what they're using. The, the, it takes about seven, eight months from the time you inject to the time the tree is protected. So during that time, it's at risk. But once it's protected, that'll last 12, 16, 18 months. Uh, but you then you have to come back and inject again. But there are people doing it. There's about, uh, 
out of the 6,400 acres, about 1,200 acres are being injected on about an uh, 18 to 24 month uh, rotation. So there was like a temporary stock uh, gap as far as like a, some product you could use uh, that uh, just for a couple years yes. because they didn't know what else would work? Right. So the product that works is, is it's a chemical called propiconazole. The, formula, the, the brand name is TILT, T-I-L-T. And that is now going to be fully registered. And very soon we'll get a label for it. And so we got special permission to use it uh, because the, the residue testing found that it was not a problem. But yeah, so that was good. So like I said, we have, we're, there's about 1,200 acres that are on a rotation of being injected. Other people, it, it does cost some money. So you know, some people can afford it, others can't afford it, others don't want to do it, some want to do it. So it, it's a mix. So one of the other mitigation strategies is we noticed that in groves that were newly planted, or newly planted areas and old groves, or in top worked situations where the trees had only been grown for about three years, three years. So they, you know, they been stumped to a stump and then top worked to a new variety. Um, very little beetle activity. But in groves where it's the big old trees and it's like a forest, mm -hmm. a lot of beetle activity. Um, and this had been noticed by the growers and, and we noticed it as well. So we did, a, we did an experiment with Dr. Carillo, um, he's our, our entomologist. We went ahead and put traps for the beetles, a passive trap. It looks like the trunk of a tree. It's just a black trap, funnel trap. And we put those between the trees. And then we put a little light sensor on top of it that recorded the light 24-7. Um, and we left them out for a year. And we put them in full-grown groves with big canopy, top work groves, and newly planted grow, uh, areas of groves. And significant difference in beetle activity. And, and so in the, the old growth groves, it's like a forest, a lot of beetle activity. In the top worked, much significantly less. In the newly planted, significantly less. So, so why is that? Yeah, so when we thought about it, you know, these beetles are, from an evolutionary standpoint, they're forest species. And so the old growth, old canopy avocado groves is like a forest. And so it's low light, um, low wind, and it's perfect habitat. Whereas when they, they don't, they, they avoid light. And part of it is probably they're also avoiding wind because they can't fly very well. So if it's windy, they sort of get pushed around. Right? Down. Yeah, right? So we found that out uh, probably, oh, we finished the study. I'd say after about six months, we pretty much we did the study for a year, but found out that that was the deal. So we've been encouraging people to reinstitute their pruning programs to get as much light into the groves and still make production. Right. right. Yeah. As much, that's, yeah, that's, that's a key point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just cut all your trees from that. Right but no. So good news, bad news. Good news and bad news. <laughs> so yeah. So we went ahead and and have been promoting that, and and a lot of people have been going in and reinstituting their pruning programs. Some of these old groves where the fruit production doesn't start for 9, 10, 12 feet because the trees have shaded out the lower canopy for so many years, you really need to restart, rejuvenate, we call it rejuvenate the trees. Mm -hmm. So this case, like I said, these trees, we had only let them get to about 20, 25 feet tall, but it was so much like a forest. And so we started losing random trees, and that's beautiful. all these trees and now they're you know, going to start to grow back next year we'll probably top one or two or something like that. so then, is this like one variety or just a few old varieties this is two varieties this is lula and lula seven uh, old time lula is a good avocado it's got some problems with scab and things but in any event so we're gonna we're starting these trees over. so uh, yeah i don't know if we've mentioned this yet but i mean right after you stump these trees you uh, whitewash them so that yes. the bark wouldn't uh, sunburn. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so it's like, um, yeah, so something that has been in the shade for years, and then all of a sudden you take the canopy away, and now it's exposed to full sun, the tissue under the bark, the cambium, can overheat and kill it, and then you, you, you damage the tree or kill the tree. So, a different experiment that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so by whitewashing, it's sort of like sunscreen for trees. It's an old time thing that's been used for over a hundred years for sure. And you, so it's a, you, know, you use the white latex paint to loot it? Yes, so what we did, thank you, yeah, so what we did is we took about a 50-50 a, a or 60-40 whitewash latex paint 
mixed it, and then sprayed it on the trees. You can make your own white finish, but it's, it's a bit of a preparation to make your own. It's just fast to go down and get some latex and then paint it on. Um, so one of the other strategies is in these old groves is to get the production back down to the bottom and to increase the light. And one of the strategies is to come in and stump your trees and restart them and use it as an opportunity to maybe change varieties, things like that. Um, so that's what this is showing. Yeah. Now, I'm, I should mention the chips. So one of the things, when you pull the tree out of the ground, you get the root system out, part of it, then you come in and you chip or shred, and that's what this is. And after you shred this, you want to uh, apply uh, either some type of insecticide, whether it's a whether it's a, a conventional or a biological insecticide, to the chips, just a couple of times because some beetles may be attracted to it, mm -hmm. and so if they, you know, they'll kill them on contact.